Hey, Cancer Seeker. Love y'all. Welcome back to the Existential Shift with Morgane. Um, Happy New Year. This will be your January Terrascope for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and in honors of North Node and Cancer, although generally I like to include North Node, also North Node and Cancer. So, let's breathe out 2018. And breathe in 2019 for Cancer for January. Mm, you're in your elements, some of you. I'm, I'm shuffling and feeling like it's very wavy, it's very slow and mellow. It's the uh, calm Cancerian. We've learned a great lesson. Trust, but verify. You're trusting, but you verify. You're, you're learning how to be um, a believer, but not a like not not like having blind faith. Verify. Cancer. January. This is the after tarot. I love them. Very cool. If my hair is going to nag. It's, I, I can see it coming. The hair is going to nag me. I'm going to play with it. Let's see. Maybe this. No, you know what? Like this. Does that work? No. All right. We're going to do this. Yeah. The, my hair, please, just stop. Okay. okay. My bangs are all over. Welcome to my meaningful channel with spiritual messages and emotional guidance and energetic coaching where you can see me play with my hair. Hey, if you're a woman, then this is a great lesson for you. Your hair is a lot of your strength, energy is in the hair. You know? okay. All right, is that better? Like yelling at the screen. I don't care. I want to see the cards. <laughs> it's not your face here. Sorry, Cancer. January. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the cards to come out. New Year's in January for my Cancerian seekers and magical creatures. I love you guys so much. Thank you. I'm feeling goodies. Okay. The Magician. The Ten of Pentacles. And the Page of Cups. Can you see from here? Can you see this? Whatever it is that you're working on manifesting now will bear fruit uh, towards March. And it's very interesting. You're not the first. I, did, I just did Aquarius. They had similar energy. I feel it is connected to how now we have the eclipses in January. And in March, uh, Uranus is going back to Taurus. And it's like, I feel like there's a lot of um, uh, synchronicity between January and March. Like initiation in January. Uh, completion and stepping forward with things further in March. Um, I also see a child or a pet. Not just because I have the obvious here. This beautiful dog that looks like my um, rest in peace baby angel fur kiddo Oliver that I just lost. And then there's a kid here. So Yes, there's the obvious because it's in the card in the Ten of Pentacles, but I also have next to it the Page of Cups. It's a young energy, um, very Pisces, very animal oriented. Watch Aquarius. I, 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 I already feel resemblance. I want to like fix this frame a little bit so you can see more. But I just exposed the Nutella. Oh yeah, that's much better. Now we can see the cards.
The Magician, Ten of Pentacles, and the Page of Cups. Some of you are manifesting family, children, home. You're calling it out into the universe. Make sure that the way you are calling it out, um, the way you are calling it in, I'm sorry, is very grounded and focused in what it is that you want. Be careful what you wish for kind of thing. You need, you need to make sure that you're getting something accurate. So be very clear with your manifestation. And don't let your heart uh, overflow and kind of affect your judgment. Do it from um, a very conscious uh, place. Of course, you need to your heart to echo it and you need to feel it. Um, but it needs to be very harnessed and very focused, the energy, and not scattered. By the sea. Some of you are considering of moving, living close to the ocean. I see a self-reflection that has to do either with a home situation or a family situation. Someone might be, a family member might be uh, offering their support in a way. Could be financial slash emotional support, could be both. Cancer, January. Lovers and the Two of Swords. A decision is waiting to be made. very it's it's a decision that is very hard for you to make because even though seemingly on the surface it's a mundane decision you feel like it's something that might affect the entire rest of your I don't want it to be dramatic rest of your life but let's just say a long period of time you feel like it's going to be meaningful um, and you really want to make sure you're doing the right thing you're making the right decision this one also one kind of called out Queen of Wands. Okay. I'm kind of getting this one too. Oh, death card. Oh. Sorry, I want to turn off the heat. Maybe you guys can hear me better even then. Okay. Hmm. Okay, this is a very specific um, narrative that probably speaks to few of you. Um, someone that experienced in their earlier years I don't know if circumstances in their family or with their parents or with their siblings required making a choice and maybe they felt a little bit left out um, like I see a family going through a real a big change and someone is kind of like kind of home alone kind of thing only a little bit more dramatic um, imagine like a sibling an older sibling leaving the home for whatever reason and then the younger sibling is feeling a little bit now a little bit um, not sure where to put themselves now in the new home dynamic like because somehow that decision of whoever left has made a big impact on the person who stayed and I, I'm not even sure if the person who left was aware of the impact that it had on the other individual I'm 
I see siblings here, brothers, sisters. Either someone died when you were young or uh, a divorce or an old brother or sister left the house for some reason, probably with, because of conflict within the home. Um, and they went on and had an entire new life, right? But the person who stayed behind, that affected them on, on levels that the individual that left and started a new, really, I don't know if they even have a clue. What am I tapping into here? Guys, if this doesn't speak to you, be patient with me. Other narratives will come up and also more cards will, will lay out more cards. Um, magician and the deaths on the two sides and then right in the middle, the lovers. I feel like also a choice was forced on you. So it's probably either was a move or something like that, that you were young, you couldn't decide and it has affected you until now in ways that are like, Major. Show me more, please, into this. What are we doing here? What are we seeing? Show me more. Okay. Gotta love it when they do that. So, six, yeah. A separation of some sort. Six of Swords. Okay, so I have half of them are in reverse, half of them are in their upright. So I actually, it was like this, but I didn't want the entire package to be in reverse because it's a lot of cards. But because it's somewhere like this and somewhere like that, I'll, I'm bringing it back to the way it was, the way it felt. So I have here three of wands and the, um, and, and I'm sorry, the, the hangman in the reverse after the six of swords. Hangman, three of wands in the reverse. And then I have five of wands, the fool, the star, and six of wands. And right here, bottom of the deck, eight of swords. I actually really like the eight of swords here in this, in this deck because there's liberation from the restraints. Um, unlike in the Rider Waite where it's just her tangled in fears and in... Um, Bondage, bondages. Sorry, give me a second. This is a very um, different energy than what I'm used to having with you guys, Cancer, but love you all and you're all welcomed in my tribe of seekers and I'm sure narratives change and energy changes. We're, we're all been going through a shift, so that actually that does make sense um share your thoughts with me about this okay start with six end with six three three huh. someone just didn't want to be I, I'm, I'm i'm guessing that the home situation wasn't good Right? It was not a good home situation. And whoever this person is that decided to, to leave, uh, they just decided they don't want to be a victim in the story anymore. They don't want to lead that type of life anymore. They decided to take their own fate in their hands and leave. And life has brought them many challenges since. Many, many, many challenges since. But also they have learned so much. They have grown so much and have become, as a result, very inspiring. Like I see an individual here with a very inspiring um, life story. Like there's a journey here. And interesting, look at what I did. Okay, I know what it means, but what for me anyway, but that's subjective. So I, I'm going to try and not like... Uh, projected at you guys but I want to show you something interesting like runes and like um, 
The tarot can be placed from right to left, from left to right, from up to down, and so on. This time, I intuitively started from the right side to the left side, which is a very uh, Semitic way, right? In the Semitic languages, you write from right to left. I'm from Israel. In Hebrew, you write, uh, you start at the right and finish at the left. And then instead of going like this, what I did is naturally I, I just, I just, I went like this and then from left to right. Someone really went through um, a big change in their life. They went through a journey from one type of world to another, from one type of language to another. Someone may have literally moved to a different country or to a different culture or to a different language. Um, and their story is paved with temporar temporarity. I don't see any um, consistency. Like from one thing to another, many, many, it's right after the death card, many, many changes, beginnings and endings and beginnings and endings. Possibly they went after a dream. They wanted to sacrifice their old self for the opportunity of a dream, for the path that they believed in. But they had this vision that it will be easier than it was. It was way harder. They thought the role, because they were so um, certain of their journey, so they thought it would look like this, right? But it, this, it's in the reverse. It ended up looking like Five of Wands. But here's the fun part of Five of Wands, especially in the after tarot. The person who keeps going, that keeps standing, is the last, is the person that wins. I see no um, hesitation, no fear. And even if there was fear, they still acted uh, with bravery, with faith much faith in the unknown and in their um, dream or vision. I'm getting I'm getting the goosebumps speak goosebumps. Um, I hope a lot of you there are are, are um, resonating with this guys there's a sun moon rising venus so on just watch other placements but for me i really specifically know what this is about and if you guys out there are resonating um i'm pleased to say that this allegory this shaman journey the fool the star there's the uh, there's the, um, the archetype of uh, Jason and the Golden Flea here, of the journey to find, you know, his truth, his origin, his, his, his home. This is winning. Six of Wands right after Five of Wands, right after Three of Wands. Starts with this journey, somewhat of, of escape. And look at where he ends up. It's more than going from um, from stormy seas to calm waters. It's um, to really safe land. Like we're no longer in the waters. Like the only waters that we have here is, is a little um, safe purifying, healing, lake kind of thing. But the rest is very like earthbound. I know this is fire, of course, the wands, but it feels more like this was like a rocky, unstable boat, right? And this is a sturdy horse that leads you through a, a, a specific path. And now there's a point zero. Sorry, give me one second. 
this is this is a very powerful message and this is such a specific narrative so for those of you who don't I'm sorry um, you guys do have I will do a part of the um, an example of the extendeds that I normally do for monthlies the monthly extendeds I will do it here on YouTube after this um, so new narratives can come alive from it so stay tuned and also um, this month's extended is actually the yearly extended so link below you can have uh, messages for January but for the entire 2019 over there so check it out so let's oh and let's not forget this eight of swords yeah there there is this um, there is a sense of liberation here I said point zero, eight of swords, ten of cups, page of pentacles, queen of pentacles. Sorry, give me a second. Okay. I can't stop. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> sorry, um, so we have here Eight of Swords, Ten of Cups. Page of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune, King of Wands. Three of Cups, Nine of Pentacles, after the Eight of Pentacles, Two of Wands, Four of Wands. Okay. You're going to get a really good taste of the type of extendants that I do on Vimeo today, in case you haven't gotten the chance to watch those. I'm going to see if I can. I want to see more cards. Let me find you. Let's do this. And let's do this. And <laughs> give me a second here. I'm going to, because I want to finish up with this reading as it is before I show you the um, what I'm going to do for you guys. Three of Cups, Nine of Pentacles, Two of Wands, Four of Wands. Okay, let me let me let me process this for a second, or two, or three. I'm getting emotional. Sorry. Um. Someone has been keeping the faith through thick and thin. You know, Job, story of Job, he kept believing, but uh, according to the story, God kept inflicting the worst on him. Worst miseries, worst events, loss. Um, and he kept going. He serves as an example in the Bible for, uh, I'm not religious, it's just, the, I use allegories as, you know, as means to convey messages. Um, what was I saying? Um, he's perceived as a true believer, you know? And uh, there's an individual uh, who, uh, who kept going, no matter what life kind of presented at them. And uh, 
And I feel like So I know this is a reading for January, but all the readings keep bringing spring up, um, March through May time. And this one is doing the same thing, where in January, there will be um, the beginning of sensing liberation from that Job mechanism. Um, Fate is stepping in with the uh, Wheel of Fortune. Sorry, I feel like there's a lot of energy inside trying, wanting to, there's a lot of messages and I'm trying to like give them room to become actual cognitive thoughts that, um, that I can speak with words and not just like, uh, because I'm sensing it really strong. I just, I, I want to, so give me, please be patient with me. Thank you. Because there's a lot going on here. By April, I feel like some of you will finally have the feeling like everything you worked for hasn't been for nothing. Um, like you finally feel like the gods haven't abandoned you. For those of you who feel like you may have been abandoned by the divine, um, I see a renewed fate and is going to come to you in the form of actual people and actual events and just opportunities money will come easier um, relationship will come easier um, recognition and if you've been feeling for i don't know how long like you've been um you know you have your legs you have your brain you have your heart you have your hands and skills and knowledge and that's what you've been that's what you have that's what you've had to carry you so far but if until now that same strength and vision was leading you through something that felt very thick and foggy and scary and confusing almost like you were walking in a dark dungeon or a cave that you can't see the light outside but you just keep walking suddenly well, not so suddenly, you know it's not so suddenly, but seemingly suddenly. It's like you're still doing the same things, but now the light is coming in and you can see more clearly. And you can breathe more easily. And you feel normal. Not, e not even like, oh, I'm completely blessed now and everything is great. It's just normal. If so far you felt like a, a, a cursed mutation that no matter what you do and how much you try, things always seem to just turn upside down. <laughs> like no matter what your intent is, somehow it keeps turning upside down. And maybe you were wrong about your destiny. Maybe you imagined and maybe it wasn't really your path. And maybe you were not in the right place. And maybe all of this hazard and difficulties was just trying to show you that you were wrong and you, you, need, you need to change or do something else. Suddenly it's like, I see like, something is opening up in front of you that allows you to see the entire story and really understand why things happened the way they did, why you had to go through certain things, what you've learned, what you've accumulated. I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's one thing to think about it or read about it. It's a whole other level to actually experience it. Point zero. How do I explain to you guys what I mean by point zero? It's just ridiculous because... I don't feel like this is a complete change. I feel like, if anything,
something like that was deeply uh, engraved in you in your childhood that you believed in very strongly and you've pursued and you, you've built your entire life around and you've lived through it if until very recently if not still you were doubting yourself thinking was i just crazy reality is starting to shape itself in in the shape of you So how do I connect it to point zero that keeps just ringing in my head? Point zero, point zero. I don't know if you 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 proved yourself worthy or you passed some sort of test that your soul some some big test. I feel like some of you who are listening uh, were really tested this year. A test of your character your soul was testing your character to see if you're ready for the next level to see if you're ready to fulfill your soul mission that's what this is I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm tearing up um, this could be your 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 the you that you know, the, the inner child, a piece of you that was always still there, that stayed there in that home, in that city, even though your body is might be miles and miles away from there, something in you stayed there and And now you're finally truly leaving could have been years and years since you left but because a piece of you was still there you couldn't fulfill your you couldn't continue to the next level if someone um, died when you were very little there is the possibility that their soul stuck around to protect you, to stay around you. And only now they feel like they can let go of you because you in a way have let go of them. Not in a bad way, but maybe you have um, matured in a way that you no longer need them. So you can start living your life and they can they can go to their next level as a soul either reincarnate or do a different light work i don't know what goes on over there but i'm feeling like eight eight zero zero uh, 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 a physical shape is being Sorry, I know I'm sounding really, really weird. I can't even, I'm trying to make sense of the things that are coming in. I, it's not like I hear voices. It's not that. It's not like something is talking to me. It's just, it's just an energy of knowledge is, is in me. And I'm like, and then my brain needs to translate it in a language that I can understand myself and then convey. And then it goes through a process. I hear, I, I feel certain things in Hebrew and then I translate it to English. It's, it's a whole mess in there but so thank you for being patient um and with that energy leaving your space it makes room for something else to enter your space it could be this king of wands um it could be this queen of pentacles And I see some of you um, 
even if you'd made money until now, even if you had friends until now, if you if you learned new things and had adventures until now, there was always this dark cloud around everything. I'm not saying necessarily depression, but it's like a, a, a dark cloud of, of constant struggle around everything that couldn't allow you to actually um, be joyous with your success, be joyous with your achievements, be joyous with your knowledge and your inspiration and your creativity, there was always this really dark something that was around and it's gone. Cancer. And a sacrifice needed to be made. You didn't do anything. The universe did something ripped something out of you to allow something else come in changed just your dna is like different some of you are like literally experiencing i know i'm feeling it i know exactly what this is about exactly please tell me if this spoke to you if it didn't i'm sorry um well at least you, you got a funny experience um now let me show you what I do in my extendeds for for February. Now you have the, the yearly 2019 as an extended, but I want to give you guys a taste in case you have an experience. So I, I take the numerical and element aspect of the cards, I rearrange the table and I do something else. This is an intuitive reading that I've developed that comes with connection to uh, my connection to the to, to numbers. It's, not, it's something that I will teach in my tarot master class, but it's not something that is by the book tarot kind of thing. Um, so if you see other tarot readers do it, know that they took it from me. Just kidding. I don't care if, if they do it. Knowledge needs to be exposed. If it works for them, good. Just give me credit. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry. What am I doing? All right. So first, let me take... Um, you know what? Let me take a picture of this for one second. Oh, my phone is not here. Never mind. So let's put the major arcana here. And there's a lot of those. According to the order of appearance at first. And only afterwards I'll rearrange as I normally do. Um, let's put the major arcanas aside. For a sec. Now, normally, what I do is I take repetition, aka two eights, two. Oh my God! Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups on the table. It's like if you felt like nothing was working for you, and every time you were about to touch happiness, it kind of been ripped out of you um, in a weird, weird way. You're gonna really start touching it uh, this year cancer it's, it's it's like it's all coming back at you in return uh and oh i have her the king of wands and the, and the queen of wands i was so immersed in my um in my channeled messages i i failed to see what is going on, on the table i'm gonna keep them in front of me so i have two twos two of swords and two of wands now this is fun two of wands three of wands Four of Wands, Five of Wands, and Six of Wands, and there, and then the Six of Swords. So we have two twos and two sixes, Sword, Fire, Fire, Sword. It's surrounded by, by swords, and in the midst of it, there's nothing but fire. It's interesting, I'll get to it. And here I have Eight of Swords, Eight of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles, eight, nine, ten, and then the Ten of Cups next to it. Did you understand what I did? I did the chronological order and then the repetitions. Um, I'm gonna put the Three of Cups back, and I'm just gonna—I'm not gonna really address them because we just—you know—we don't have time to do all of it. But um, oh, this little page of cups that keeps feeling like he's being left behind, like. Oh.
Okay, now for only 40 minutes. All right, whatever. By the way, guys, if you want to learn what I do with tarot, which is very much a combination of the classic way of reading tarot and the, all the theoretical knowledge that exists, but I add I added to it throughout the years a lot of my esoteric inner knowledge combined with other um, divination crafts, runes, numerology. Um, so I have a very specific way that works and I teach. So check out my online tarot masterclass link is also below. Um, and um, yeah, just check it out. Okay, let's do this. Sorry. Now I'm going to put them in chronological order. Zero, one, six, ten, twelve, thirteen, seventeen. I don't have a seven here, right? So I have two, uh, two, three, four, five, six, no seven, eight, nine, ten. I feel like seven is the thing that was learned and mastered throughout the times. Solitude, spirituality, karmic lessons, spiritual lessons, uh, cognitive knowledge, And now this. <laughs> now this is crazy because, so let's talk about Yason, Jason and his golden flea and his journey that I have here from the two all the way to the six, from the initiation of the journey and the two of going on a new path right after being stuck in a childhood home with a lot of psychological issues, journeying on to uh, on a mission of self-discovery of you know following a dream um, uh, um, like an, an unknown that is just you know was, was like a calling fighting dragons sailing through oceans and from detached waters after all this journey, we're arriving in calm waters. 2266. Six, six. Time to have the connections that you're deserving, the family that you're deserving. 2266. Six. Time to have harmony in your path. Two and sixes are very harmonious numbers connection oriented one-on-one -on -one, family group um, it's very um, it, it's it's bound for balance bound for harmony um, it's round it's kind it's sweet the two breaks down to three and four and five that was the, this is the journey this was a difficult journey some of you if you're not married you're really going there in 2019. And this is a reading for uh, January, so who knows? Maybe it's happening like now. This is a connection that um, is between eight, nine, ten. But also look at them. So this is a connection between two um, very um, independent individuals. Each has its own world, its own um, uh, self value, and after achieving all that in their own path, in their own journey, they, they kind of they meet at the end of the road. And here we have Ten of Pentacles and Ten of Cups. 
And it starts with starts after this entire journey of you know Job is kind of releasing himself from the curse. Um, point zero. So eight eight in the liberation aspect. There's a certain uh, release of a karmic debt. And finally, there's um, an open for just self fulfillment. It's like you're still a great runner. Imagine the difference between, you know, running and then one way of running you run, but people are throwing rocks at you and sticks at you, and then, and then the storm comes. And then a wave of heat comes, and then you're, uh, a, a pack of like crazy ravens come and like flies all over you, and you're running and you're running, and, you're running. and you can't enjoy the view or the um, the sensation of running. And then in the other parallel universe that you're about to become acquainted to, you're running, but it's it's quiet. No stormy seas, no crazy hurricanes, no packs of crows coming to shit all over you. <laughs> Excuse my language. You can just be. The Wheel of Fortune right above everything, kind of in the middle, be like, yo, I'm the ruler. <laughs> um... Yeah, so you were tested this year, this entire year, or lifetime, uh, or even six years, maybe. For some of you, it's five or six years. Um, it's been a journey of a test. And look at where it's leading towards. Right, and we can see it here. Willing to take a risk and believing in yourself and choosing a brand new path and completely shifting and changing your world, having to sacrifice a lot for it and go through massive um, Pluto moments, like massive changes of leaving things behind and beginnings and endings and begin and all in the name of this dream, of this vision, of this star, this morning star. And look at that, you, you were not crazy. Cancer. It's like you went from beginning to completion of the test. Um, seven was meaningful. It's not on the table. Except for in the 17. The thing that, you know, seven is what, it's part of what led you. It's the vision, right? faith but you already proved yourself that you're 100 can be a seven so it no longer serves you no longer need it and well i'm practically giving you a gypsy reading this is a very intense long reading with a lot of cards Um, okay, I'm going to ask for thank you. bearing with me um, I didn't keep going into it because we're already really way too deep in reading we're already on 50 minutes um, so check out your extended for 2019 you can book a private reading with me if you want link is also below all the fun stuff are below 
Um, okay. Mm. Which one? The rooms. Message from the rooms for my cancer seekers for January, please. Rooms for my cancer seekers for January. I'll show you one second. So, Hera, I'm sorry, uh, Hagalas, which is like hail, Kinaz, this could be age, this could be K, and this one is Hera, another either J or potentially H. Let me see. Okay, this is very clear. Uh, Hagalas Hail is it's exactly the reading in three rooms. It's unbelievable. Hagalas is 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 the uh, circumstances that we can't control. There are above and beyond us. It's nature that is freezing that we can't fight. We have to wait it out. Winter is coming. Okay, so winter is over because right after Hagalas is the first room that came to pass. We have Kenaz. Something is ending. Hagalas is ending. And energy is opening up what is beginning now in a positive way because Kanaz is in its upright Hagalas, which is the change of the season, the, the meltdown of the ice. Okay, when winter comes spring, and you, you, you know how I kept talking about how I keep saying springtime. So you'll start feeling it in January because I have this reading for you guys in January, or else if it wasn't relevant for now, then it won't come out now. But you should know it will start really, really, really uh, manifest fully and clearly towards spring, March, April. So just go through the process, allow, to win, allow winter, as winter fades, so is this mechanism you are going through fades. And with the spring, um, get ready for... Um, New luck, okay? New energy around you. If you used to swim in stormy seas, now you're swimming in calm water. If you used to run in, in, in Avak, now you're going to run in clear blue chirping birds, kind of like sky. Um, this is very much Persephone rising from the underworld to back to life, you know, to the living realm. This was a very intense reading for me, Cancer, of course. Um, and the runes just completely um, summed it up. This entire 50 minutes were just summed up perfectly. I will see you in the extendeds for the year. I will potentially uh, talk to you if you'll book a reading. Check out Tarot Masterclass. Happy New Year, uh, and we'll meet again in February. Bye. Oh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Okay, bye. <laughs>